Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and this morning for the second day in a row, I have had, um, and many of you probably have these, I don't get headaches at all, I don't get migraines, never have, nothing like that, but for some reason the last two days, I've had a little bit of flashing, I'll be staring at my computer, and it's, uh, it's kind of like a flashing thing, and then it never fails within, say, 30 minutes or so i'll start to have a, a little bit of a headache um the, the last time there was only one other time this happened to me and it was after i had my afib surgery and for about a week after that i experienced a similar thing but i have not had headaches um since that time and i'm and i the last two days i'll have a little bit of a flashing and then 30 minutes later it has a headache then the, later on the headache will go away but it just kind of uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I need to just drink more water. That may be what it is. Maybe dehydrated. Okay. This market is starting to get a little bit interesting on us, folks. We, uh, the XR, XRP, we've, we've gone over 237 billion total market cap. There is new money coming into the system. And XRP um, and Stellar have been leading the way. Uh, today, XRP is, uh, today, Bitcoin's leading the way, but um, XRP has come over 22 cents now. Let me refresh this and see if we've got any updates here. Yeah, we're over 22 cents. Um, looks like Stellar's over 7 cents. Bitcoin has come over $8,000. Now this is starting to get interesting. Okay, I saw Glenn Hutchins on um, CNBC this morning. And for those of you that don't remember, Glenn Hutchins is on the board of the Digital Currency Group. He's also at the New York Federal Reserve. He's, a, he's one of the chairmen, okay? And he is a crucial figure in all of this. Now, there's something I missed that I just happened to remember when I was look when I, I was, it just popped in my brain today. Let me show you something. Okay, so as you remember, he's a board member um, at the Digital Currency Group. And in his bio, it says Glenn Hudgen, H Hutchins is the chairman of North Island and co-founder of Silver Lake. Well, something popped in my head that I just never have shown you guys, and I decided that I would show it to you today. Here is Silver Lake, the global leader in technology investing. This was founded by Glenn Hutchins. You'll never guess who was an advisor at Silver Lake back in 2000, February 2009 to September 2009. Silver Lake. Brad Garlinghouse was an advisor there. Then he went on to work at AOL for a couple of years. Then he went to Hightail for a couple of years. Then uh, he was a board member here, and then a board member there, board member there. And then he goes on to become uh, president and CEO of Ripple, and then C or COO, and then CEO of Ripple. So there's your direct link between Brad Garlinghouse and Glenn Hutchins. I had never talked about that on this channel but now you know now i want to show you something this came from david remember you uh ripple sued youtube now and let's let's make sure we get something out here ripple sued youtube because youtube ha is letting these scam these live scam accounts that pretend to be brad garlinghouse that are giving away um, XRP or, or pretending to give away XRP and it's really a scam. They want you to send them some a small amount of XRP, then they're going to send you a real amount. Well, this you this the the lawsuit from Ripple to YouTube confuses me because Google owns YouTube and Google is an investor in Ripple and all of these companies are out in San Francisco. You would think that Ripple could pick up a phone the phone and say, look or to Google or to YouTube and say, look, guys, here's what's going on. Can you take these, these, and these down? Um, you would think that it would be like that instead of having to go through a silly lawsuit because really nobody wins in a lawsuit. But I, so I, I'm confused by this totally. But David Schwartz, one of the things that a lot of us were, were thinking about when we saw this is 
I wonder if they're going to start taking down YouTube channels that talk about Ripple or XRP. So David Schwartz, he says, weirdly, YouTube just decided to suspend my channel. S. Joel Katz for impersonation. I wonder who they think I was impersonating. Then he said, then he says, this is what he got. Please be aware that you are prohibited from accessing, possessing, or creating any other YouTube accounts. Does this mean I can't watch any YouTube videos anymore? <laughs> so anyway, so I saw that and I my it got my wheels turning. So I want I gave I made an announcement this morning and I wanted to, but before I do my announcement, I wanted to show you this is where you can watch uh David Schwartz videos when he posts videos he's created a cinnamon video account so here's my announcement fyi if youtube starts closing accounts that mention ripple or xrp due to the lawsuit i will most likely open a cinnamon video account but i also opened the digit the dai in exile channel i will use code word brito for ripple and code word cats for XRP. So I'll talk about Ripple and XRP on that channel, but I'll use the word Brito after Arthur Brito. I'll use Brito for when I'm talking about Ripple, and I'll use cats when I'm, which is Joel Katz, David Schwartz Twitter um, handle. I'll use cats instead of saying XRP because I've learned through this the current events we've been going on that YouTube's uh, algorithms pick up on those words when you say them and they can strike you for them. So the new ch channel is DAI in exile if I get banished. And this is the channel right here. If you want to see it, DAI in exile, it looks similar, it's the same as my current channel. Only difference is we've only got 76. Let's see if we've got any more subscribers. Woohoo, we've got 88 subscribers now. I'm not going to post anything unless I go in exile, but um, for the time being, um, this I, I'm just going to send people there to subscribe so that you know where I'll post a video if that happens. And again, it's DAI in exile. Um, okay, moving along. All right, this was a great tweet that I saw. I did not I did not know this, but it, this is this is the tweet right here. Some uh, from it's from uh, Mazaj Mazaj um, Hyperledger Quilt. They highlighted Hyperledger Quilt was initially contributed by NTT Data and Ripple. Now NTT Data is the company that is that owns Everest, which is that document that I've been showing you. Um, in but Hyperledger Quilt Quilt was contributed by NTT Data and Ripple. Hyperledger Explorer was initially contributed by IBM, Intel, and DTCC. And remember, all of these things are for the purpose of interoperate operating together. And this person replied, IBM is Stellar XLM. Uh, Ripple is obviously XRP one two punch. These both these will both be tremendously successful. People in the XLM community should stop hating on XRP and realize they can coexist. Look, all, a lot of these things are going to interoperate, folks. That's just the way it is. But none of them, and I do mean none of them, have had the, the head start that Ripple had and have made even close to the headways that in worldwide finance that Ripple has made. And that's the reason that I chose to talk to really focus on Ripple and XRP with this channel is because it's undeniably the leader in this whole space undeniably but um while we're here i wanted to show you for those of you that haven't seen it this video you could watch this several times and it's really exciting because hyperledger quilt um is a java implementation of the interledger protocol enabling payments across any payment network this is a great video for you to watch gets you it's just a couple of minutes watch. welcome to the hyperledger greenhouse an open source consortium for developing business blockchain technologies hosted by the Linux Foundation. Within the greenhouse, diverse global communities collaboratively develop open source projects that uniquely approach enterprise blockchain challenges. These technologies can cross-pollinate and interoperate, just like how the communities driving the projects collaborate in an open and neutral environment. Hyperledger Quilt is a tool set in the Hyperledger Greenhouse that offers interoperability between ledger systems by implementing the Interledger Protocol, or ILP, which is primarily used to transfer value across distributed and non-distributed ledgers. 
Today, value transfers are relatively easy if the sender and recipient reside in the same country or own accounts in the same network. However, since ledger systems are often siloed and disconnected, problems arise when transferring value to a different payment network. As an enterprise-grade implementation of the ILP protocol, Quilt can facilitate interoperability between different networks and values by providing libraries and reference implementations of the core interledger components. With ILP, money can be packetized, routed, and delivered over communication networks with automatic routing and a series of secure multi-hop payments, connecting bank accounts to digital wallets and everything in between. Long term, Quilt can become a ledger interoperability solution that enables more than just payment transactions, but a means to exchange any sort of asset across the many different blockchain networks that will exist. Get started with Hyperledger Quilt today by downloading the source code, accessing the documentation, and joining our community from our website, hyperledger.org. great video that kind of shows you how all this is being set up to interoperate. Now, go figure. I decided every time that we uh, have a topic like this, I always go back to I am Legion. And usually I find out that he has already summarized all of this. This is in this case, he summarized it way back October 13th, 2019. He's tying MUFG Bank to MTT Data, to Hyperledger Quilt, MTT Everest, Bank of Japan, ECB, Ripple. So let's go through it. MUFG joins Ripple's Global Payment Steering Group. And then down here, um, it, it says MUFG and NTT Data lay foundation for digital trade between Singapore and Japan using blockchain. Uh, both companies are collaborating on the digitalization of cross-border and trade finance. Um, let's see what else. Go to the next one. Um, and then we've got this Hyperledger Quilt, which we know that they've created. They've collaborated on NTT Data, um, confirms their adoption of ILP as the Hyperledger Quilt project. And then, of course, this all leads you right back to this Everest document that we keep talking about. Um, Everest NTT Data Company. And then the interesting, this gets interesting when you talk about who owns NTT Data. Government of Japan owns the parent of NTT Data. And then right here, it shows um, NTT Communications, Government of Japan, um, NTT Data. And then we go, uh, let's see, Bank of Japan and the EU. Stella Joint Research Project of European Central Bank and the Bank of Japan synchronized cross-border payments. Um, and here it says experiment without ILP, experiment with ILP. And then you go down here, it says Japan and EU joint venture blockchain in Japan, EU. Um, the impact of blockchain is huge. Um, its importance is similar to the emergence of the internet. And then right here, it says European, uh, the industrial cooperation, a joint venture between the European Commission and the Japanese Ministry of Economy. So you can see right here, folks, he's laid it all out for you. The, the, the Japan and the EU, that they've been working on this together from day one. Japan is like ground zero for what's going on with the Ripple. Okay, XRP Crypto, well, if SBI and Sumitomo Mitsuts, Japan's second largest bank, are partnering to offer digital banking. SBI is creating a $1 billion investment fund that's going to be set up with the SMFG, which will focus uh, investments in digital tech like 5G. Um, let's see what else we have. XRP Crypto, well, if the ECB is exploring possible future avenues by, by assessing the case for issuing a digital euro, a high-level task force is examining the pros and cons of a digital currency that can be used by intermediaries or even the citizens through their electronic devices. Um, and then this is a tweet I did the other day. I wanted to just make you all aware of it. Uh, because anytime, especially when the price of XRP starts going up, when, when Bitcoin is not moving, you start seeing tons of FUD against XRP. Because their their greatest fear is that, is that um, XRP will go over Bitcoin because they know that the tech of Bitcoin is worthless compared to XRP. And if that ever happens, it could literally steal the store of value on top of being better tech 
away from Bitcoin. So I said a lot of bad guys out there trying to scare people out of XRP, silliness and lies. Ripple did not work for the past seven years to have their most valuable asset decrease in value. We're the most interested party in the success of the XRP ecosystem. And that is Brad Garlinghouse's quote. All right. Um, XRP Yo-Yo. Let me see if I follow this guy. He's been sending some pretty good stuff to me. This Caxa Bank launches. I was talking about trade lens and some of these trade finance platforms. This is what caught my attention from him. Uh, this is Anna Boat, who's saying proud to have completed our first BPU um, um, based transactions through this the We Dot Trade, this We Trade that we were talking about the other day. But he point, he made me aware enterprise blockchain investment trade finance. Uh, there's a slide here, I think. Yeah, there's a slide, and this actually led me to, and I don't remember the website. I, I should go back and pull it back up. But there are several trade finance organizations that are like consortiums of banks having to do with this blockchain. And I think these are just a handful of them. Comgo, Trade Lens was one, VACT, Force Field. There's a, there's a website, if you go and you type in trade finance and blockchain, there's a website that outlines all of these things. And it also mentions Ripple and XRP on that website where that how it's going to be used in all of this. So none of this is your imagination. All of it's going to interoperate, whether it's trade finance for commodities or shipping, whatever, you, all of this is going to interoperate. And it all has to do with that one sheet that we keep showing you from Everest. All right. XRP Honey Bear sent me this. The president of Shanghai Gold Exchange called for a new, new super sovereign currency to offset the global dominance of the U.S. dollar. Now, here's something to think about, folks. And Mr. B actually, me and um, Mr. B and I were talking the other day and it came up in the conversation. You know, right now, you've got all these paper fiat currencies around the world that you can go and you can use those paper fiat currencies to buy precious metals. So if you want to do any kind of exchange, like on the ground, you know, person to person exchange that's not online or through banks, you can buy gold and silver or precious metals with, with paper fiat currency. Think about what ha happens to when paper currency is gone and everything is digital all of a sudden you only have one physical currency and it's going to be precious metals there at once once digital i mean once fiat paper currencies are gone all of a sudden gold and silver are the only physical thing out there that can be exchanged what do you think that's going to do to the price of the of physical metals that are exchangeable like that as currency because all of a sudden, that's going to be the only way to not be not to not be seen by governments. When you think about it, everything else once everything's digital, everything else will be seen. Gold and silver, who knows? Maybe they'll make them illegal again. I don't know, but that's that's just a thought. Um, Michelle Vandenberg um, sent me this. From R3, inside R3, during crisis periods when markets go through extreme stress, you see where the cracks are. There are solutions that exist to avoid them. This crisis may be an accelerant for the deployment of new tech. David E. Rudder. Well, Ripple said something similar to this as well. And I don't think any of this is by coincidence, folks. Look, these people, they know, they know. Remember when Brianna Man Madigan said that that xrp could help during a systemic risk situation <laughs> david rudder saying it this has been in development for years and years and years now you think that they were not that, that none of this was in preparation for this moment of course it was that's the whole point um and then this guy angel at dj09 angel sent me this r3 we are very excited to welcome the NASDAQ to the R3 ecosystem. Read our latest press release on how NASDAQ plans to leverage Corda Enterprise to build full life cycle solutions for digital assets marketplace here. This is the article. NASDAQ, the architect and provider of the world's most widely adopted market infrastructure technology and services, has entered into a long-term non-exclusive collaboration agreement 
with enterprise software firm R3 as a part of the cooperation. NASDAQ's market technology business will leverage R3's enterprise, enterprise blockchain court software Corda, along with professional services and support in building full lifecycle solutions for digital assets marketplaces. They're making it official, folks. Now, the guy that's mentioned in this article that runs head of digital assets for market technology at NASDAQ, Johan Toll. So I decided I would go find a couple of videos from Johan Toll. And you tell me if you know what Johan Toll could be talking about here. Um, let's start right about here. See markets coming out everywhere now and where our technology can very easily fulfill the demands of those markets. And where blockchain can come into, into the insurance business, into the gaming industry, the shipping industry, for example, any, anything where there is a need to build up an order book for have a buy and demand, supply and demand to meet up with one another and then securely settle them in a shared and distributed environment to reduce the need for reconciliation, reduce the need for errors that might occur in the solution. And then, of course, looking to see how could we more efficiently and immediately settle assets with one another. So would you say that blockchain is going to revolutionize the financial industry? I think it will for sure stay here. And, and I mean, blockchain is very much about changing the relationship between the issuers and the investors. And how could we kind of bring them together close to one another and speed up the markets, secure our markets? So for sure, I think blockchain has to stay. All right. Well, thank you very much. See, that's for, for settlement. Now, that's not the only video I found for you. Listen to this one. And I just want you to ask yourself, where have you heard internet of value before? I believe Chris Larson literally came up with the term. Where do you think this guy's heard? Woman or, or yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. a group of people or yeah, so. Sure. But the the guy called himself or herself as Satoshi Nakamoto, mm -hmm. and that kind of paper grabbed all these known technologies into one piece and explained how you could actually facilitate a. You could call it an internet of value, mm -hmm. where you f efficiently could transfer something of value, like money, mm -hmm. globally, 24-7, mm -hmm. without the need for a central bank. Oh, well. Right, you could call it the internet of value, couldn't you? I wonder who, who he heard that from. Now, um, <laughs> listen to this. All you, all you poor Bitcoiners out there that are still under the false impression that you're going to somehow to have a revolution and, and they're and you're gonna it's gonna be down with the banks all of you that have believed all this garbage um it might be time for you to wake up because that is not happening and he tells you so right here but he also makes it very clear of what it will be that's gonna be a revolution in finance and it's not bitcoin permissioned networks permissioned blockchains where you maybe control the participations Okay. in the network and by that we can we don't need to power the blockchain network with eight new nuclear power stations like the bitcoin is famous for sure and the transaction speed is so much uh, quicker mm -hmm. uh, when we move on to the permission networks mm -hmm. because we can have much more simpler process for reaching consensus and approving the transactions i see so i think that's two big distinctions you need to make bitcoin is one way to apply this technology and they mm -hmm. made it their way yeah yeah and there's so many other ways we can deploy this so would you say that like bitcoin would be i mean it's a, a, a cryptocurrency is that uh, bitcoin is a cryptocurrency right clearly. exactly yes so i guess could they could someone trade bitcoin um it doesn't have to be on blockchain, right? Or is it it's always going to be tied to blockchain? So Bitcoin is always tied to, to the blockchain protocol. Yeah, gotcha. exactly. So that, that's why they're using this peer-to-peer -peer mechanism. I there see. is no central operator in the Bitcoin world. But we also say that the problem with Bitcoin is that if something goes wrong, you don't have anyone to call. There's no one to sue mm -hmm. or get your money back. Right. So if they get your private key, I mean, they, they can literally steal all your Bitcoins mm. and there is no way for you to get them back. So that wouldn't function in the financial markets. Mm -hmm. So that's why we move into private permission hybrid ledgers to see, see how can we make sure to establish also a very good proven governance model for okay. these networks. Okay. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. So now you know the NASDAQ will not be using Bitcoin. Not only did he say that nobody can, there's nobody affiliated with it, but he also, he also took a stab at the climate issue and said, um, it, it takes a nuclear power plant to to uh, power Bitcoin. He took a stab at it in that uh, regard as well. And then Ripple just happened to tweet this out, I believe, yesterday. Um, this is one of the um, Ripple Labs chair um, from, let's see, from the um, 
from University of Waterloo, energy consumption is a big issue for blockchain. It's important that we identify better alternatives that can replace proof of work algorithms, Professor Hassan. <laughs> um, so there you go, folks. NASDAQ just told you they're not, it's not Bitcoin, and they told you it's permissioned, which XRP happens to be. They took their all the evidence has always been there. It's just some people have been completely blinded by their ideology, tone base, and and they continue to be blinded by their ideology tone base. And some of these guys that they're just they're not using their head. They're using they're using their heart, and that's a problem when you're investing. Um, Sven Henrich, how bad is it? This bad. He he's got a graph of QE one, two, and three. Um, the Fed asset holdings have grown more sharply than during the past, quanti past quantitative easing. These are the QE periods, and how this is 10 weeks right here, and it shows you uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 weeks of, of each program. This is what it looked like in all of those QEs, one, two, and three. This is what's happened since March 11th of this year in less than <laughs> less than 10 weeks. This is a freaking disaster, folks. I hope pe people realize it by now. This is a tweet I saw from Stuart XRP. David Andalfato, Vice President, Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, March 31st, 2014. There is, in my view, room for beneficial coexistence. For example, together with Ripple, a cryptocurrency agnostic P2P payment system to facilitate low-cost payments. There you go. And then there was this that was put out by Ripple yesterday as well. Um, this is a guy from um, from uh, SCB Thailand, Siam Commercial Bank. My name is Atit Siam Porn. Um, I work for Siam Commercial Bank as an SVP of business platform. Siam Commercial Bank is the first bank in Thailand and the largest bank uh, here in terms of total asset. Previously, when our customer would like to transfer the money to their family and friends abroad, it was very inconvenient. They have to visit our branch, they need to fill in lots of forms, they need to wait probably three to five days in order for their friends and family to receive the money. And they have no clarity at all whether they already received the money or not. With RippleNet, we can offer a real-time money transfer uh, to those countries we will have full clarity uh, once the beneficiary already received the money. It will be a notification through their mobile app, uh, which they will receive right away. And this creates lots of peace of mind um, and change the customer experience completely. Partnering with Ripple, we can expand our reach uh, through remittance companies around the world. So now we're working with one of our partners to create something new in the market. Imagine if you are a tourist that you will come to Thailand and you can use your home country mobile application and scan for payment in Thailand. You don't have to exchange for local currency um, that you will bring to Thailand at all. You can use your mobile app acting like you're living in your home country, scan for QR payment and you receive the goods right away. This creates a new customer experience that never had before. And with the partnership with uh, Ripple, we can do this and we can provide this service to our customers. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm to finish this by showing there's a, this was an Entrepreneur Magazine article, five decentralization trends to watch in 2020. And I wanted to show you that, that something I've been talking about is on here. Technology and software, no, right here, reformed financial services, um, right here. As, decentral, as decentralization trends in the market grow, expect to see more innovation. For example, iTrust Capital allows people to invest in gold and digital assets into a compliant tax advantaged and low cost IRA. For the first time, investors can get exposure to the new asset class in a traditional retirement account. And what he, what they're talking about is the, any of you who are getting laid off, and even if you're not getting laid off, you can roll your 401k if you if you did get laid off, or you can just go to iTrust Capital and create uh, an IRA yourself or, or a Roth IRA. 
and you don't have to have had a 401k, but I've got a, a deal in the description of all my videos where you, there's a coupon code where you'll get the first month free with those guys. And I opened an account there. It's it, you, you literally, and, and for those of you that don't know, I have a Roth IRA, Roth IRA over there. And I was able to buy XRP inside of the Roth IRA. Now, once that's done, I can buy and sell out of that XRP. I incur no taxes on that. As long as I, um, as long as I withdraw from that IRA after I think it's like age 59 and a half, I never pay taxes, no taxes on that XRP. How about them apples? I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that I did set up an alternate channel called DAI in Exile where you can subscribe to it. I'm not going to be posting videos there unless for some reason YouTube tried to take my, the, my main channel down because of this Ripple lawsuit. But until then, you can go and subscribe just as a reminder to yourself so that it'll pop up if I ever have to put videos there. Thanks for listening.